In this video, we're gonna be answering some top asked questions and topics that I keep seeing on my channel. Some of these topics are about real estate photography, videography, shooting, editing, some gear, and much more. So let's get into it right now. So the first question is on my how to shoot vertical real estates YouTube video. And they said, Andre, great video. I love your work, appreciate it. What lens type and size do you use for your vertical videos? Will it be the same for detailed shots? Thank you in advance. What I wanted to do is also like answer these questions, but then kind of spin it with like relatable topics that I keep seeing other questions that are similar. So in this case, shooting vertical video, focal lengths and the type of lens. So I use the same real estate setup for vertical videos. I use the RS3 mini, so it's great because it mounts natively on my camera. And I use my 15 to 35, which I'm filming right now. Now. And so I typically film all the regular real estate wide shots at 15 mil. So the widest the lens goes. And then if I have a subject on camera, I typically have them at 20 to 24 mil. And then I film detail shots at 35. So I pretty much do that same approach, whether it's vertical or horizontal. I feel like if you film somebody like an agent talking on camera at 15 mil or really wide, it's kind of like using your ultra wide on your phone. It looks really distorted. Sometimes it looks cool if you're going for that, but since I don't want them to look crazy, distorted, I'm going to film them at 20, 35, maybe that looks really natural. And then detail shots at 35, or if I throw on my 50 mil. So my suggestion would be don't just film everything at 15, because that way, if you use different focal lengths, if you have that flexibility with the zoom lens, makes the video more interesting because it's not shot in one focal length, one perspective. Okay, next question. This is on my video about real estate photography editing, which if you don't know, I'm going to plug that video. I still edit my real estate photos this way, just using my presets adjust and they're very simple approaches, but they're asking, hey Andre, big fan of the channel, appreciate that. Thanks for helping us up and coming real estate photographers who are just breaking in, for sure, that's the goal. Quick question, what percentage of the time do you use HDR and what percentage of the time do you use Flambient? Doing real estate photography for a few months now and done about 15 shoots in total. So far I only have done three bracket HDR. I've been sending photos smattered overseas. I give my photos a solid B plus and my agents have been happy so far, but I still feel like I could level up my skills. So here's my take on that and I'll start with a little bit of backstory. I actually did used to use Flambient and Flash before I started, you know, my official business pro real media. So when I was doing it myself, I would do flash and natural light and blend the photos. Now here's the thing. It took way too long. The shooting process and the editing process just took way too much time. You know, regular home anywhere from like 2,500 to like 3000 square feet would take me like over an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And then if it's a big luxury property, like the ones we do talking over two hours of just shooting photos. And most of the time I was doing video, which that alone might take just as long. So it was not a feasible workflow for me now with HDR blending, especially out sourcing to other editors that can do magic on these HDR photos. I exclusively shoot HDR. When I was editing it all myself, I would do just three brackets because I didn't feel like the windows had to be perfectly HDR blue skies look. Like I was totally fine if it was a little bit soft white, not perfect detail. Because if you think about it, half the time, it's just a fence or grass. So it's like, why do you really need to see that view? If anything, soft white, slightly blown out windows might be better in my opinion. But now that I do have a photo editor in my business. I do five bracket HDR and it has sped up the process immensely because now that same property that would have been, you know, 3000 square feet takes me like 30, 35 minutes if the home is ready to go. And then lets me focus on what I'm more passionate about, which is video. So all in all, to answer that, I don't do flash anymore. I use HDR three or five bracket, depending on the scene or the type of shoot I'm doing. And I outsource the editing and the results are great. And before moving on to the next question, I wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Textail. Textail is a clothing company and they were so kind to send me the shirt that I've been wearing in this video. It is the Everfresh Elite 701S Tech Tee. So if you've seen some of my other videos, you love that I love to wear clothing that's breathable and comfortable, and this shirt checks all those boxes. Among the highlights that are my favorite of this shirt are the fact that it's ergonomically fit. So it fits really well up top, but it's not really boxy. It just fits me really nicely. No itch label. That's another big pet peeve of mine for other clothes. And the last biggest point is the fact that it is stain repellent. So that's one big thing that I was really interested on this shirt because because for me particularly, I can never wear shirts like this color because I constantly get them dirty by the end of the day. So I wanna actually test that. Let's see how stain repellent this is. Not even wet. So if you're interested in leveling up your clothing for your next shoot, check out Textail in the link in the description. And thanks so much to Textail for sponsoring this video. Now back to the questions. Okay, moving on to the next one, which is on my how to edit a luxury real estate video and how I set up my Premiere Pro and just my editing process. They said, great video. You highlighted insights instead of going through unnecessary details. How do you replicate the camera movement for the twilight transition of the back view of the house? So I'll showcase this. This is a really cool trick that I just picked up that I found from another real estate videographer or company doing in another area. 
but essentially you film the home during the day and then you replicate that same shot at night and it does like a cool transition. So you're going from like a daytime view to a nighttime view and it's like seamless. If you're interested in the editing aspect, I do have it linked in that video. So check out that video to see how I do it in Premiere Pro. It's really easy. But as far as the shooting aspect of it, I'm not even that great at it whenever I first tried it out. But if you're just walking towards a home, for example, if it has a pool and you're going just like a straight head on shot during the day, do that same shot at night and give yourself some cues, whether you put a piece of rock down, you know you're right in the center and you're using the same focal length and same angle, everything. Just make sure to replicate it exactly the same. And then in editing, just transitions over with the gradient wipe tool in Premiere Pro. Super seamless and it looks really cool. Pro tip, keep the shot as simple as possible because it's gonna be that much harder to replicate. And my mistake when I did it on this video in particular is my shots didn't line up exactly. For example, I was doing a parallax shot and I turned a little too much in the nighttime one. But luckily the view is so dramatic in my opinion that you don't really notice that. Agents loved it, I loved it, it's cool. And one of the main reasons I wanted to showcase this question is because kind of like I'm always looking to innovate what we deliver. I feel like our video product is probably the most unique thing that really makes my business stand out. You know, our photos are great, our detail shots are really cool, then our agents love that. But honestly, most of our new clients and reoccurring clients come for our videos or those nice homes. So taking some time to innovate and introduce new things that can add value to your brand and your product are really worth it. Next question is about my real estate photography workflow video. It's so funny because I posted this video like really, really long time ago, filmed it entirely on my phone with no mic or anything. And it's still like the top viewed video on my channel. But I'm glad the information is there and a lot of people are getting value out of it. But they said, where do I shoot? How many photos and angles should it be for each room? Like three photos for each room with each shot capturing different angles. This is a great question because I hear about this all the time where they're like, okay, I kind of know the process of shooting it or the concept of shooting real estate photography, but how many photos, what angles? I see this all the time. And so here's the process that I do for feature rooms. So main living spaces like living room, kitchen, dining, master bedroom, things like that. I aim for about three to four angles and deliver that many as well. Now for secondary rooms, like secondary bedrooms, secondary baths, smaller rooms, I only deliver one perspective, one angle, because for me personally, I just shoot from to where you're looking from the doorway into the room. You see the window, you see everything about the room. I never see the point to shoot from another angle, whether it's the opposite side or something like that, because that's just what I think you would naturally see if you were to walk into that room. And that's more than plenty. So in my business, we don't shoot secondary closets. We don't shoot tons of different angles for those things. I can honestly say no agent has ever gone back and be like, hey, did you get that other angle from that secondary bedroom looking this way? It's just like I said, I don't see the point of it. That first perspective from the doorway is plenty in my opinion. And that works out great. Plus that way you don't have to deliver a ton of photos. Don't overkill and overshoot. And then on the opposite side, if you're just starting out, you can always cover yourself and still shoot maybe that additional angle just to be safe, but not deliver it initially. Just have it stored on your hard drive. If they happen to ask for it, you have it. Otherwise, I don't see the point to deliver every single angle or multiple angles of just small rooms or even just the regular rooms. And before getting to the next question, if you're getting value out of this video, you should really think about joining my community. On my website, I offer a membership program where you get access to an exclusive private Discord group with other real estate photographers, videographers, asking questions, getting feedback, blown away by the feedback in that community and the fact that it's growing, it's really awesome. Second, you get digital assets that I use all the time as far as photo presets, video LUTs, some audio presets and more. And lastly, you get access to an exclusive behind the scenes video series where I bring you to an actual job shoot and showcase everything that I'm doing. I try and make every episode different. Currently, there's four episodes at the time of this video going up and getting a bunch of good feedback that people are getting a bunch of value out of it. And if you're wondering how much this costs, it's only $5 per month. So if you're interested, link down below. Now to the next question. Okay, and then moving on to the next one. This is on my day in the life of a real estate photographer. I really enjoyed that concept of a video. Let me know what you guys think of that. I would love to do more like that. It's just like a super casual vlog of what actually a day of a real estate photographer, videographer is like. They said, I've been for the past today trying to see which system for booking and delivery is best, but so many real estate gurus here on YouTube, but no one explains or compared which is the best solution. Can you do a video comparing HD photo hub, aerial view shoot, show tour? Please someone say something. <laughs> yeah, this is a really good question. And there's a reason I haven't done a video on this yet, even though I've used two of these. I've used HD photo hub and currently we use Aereo. I haven't tried view shoot or show and tour, which are other real estate CRM delivery type options. So when I first started out, I didn't use any of these systems. I was doing everything manually. So I would send an invoice through PayPal, schedule it on Google Calendar, do my own scheduling. And so the problem with that is you have all these different systems that some you might have to pay for or in different places. And the thing that I love about these real estate style CRM programs is it's an all in one place. Your clients can order from there. You can deliver your stuff. You can invoice 
all of it's in one place. So I started with HD Photo Hub and honestly, it was just okay to me. It was kind of outdated in my opinion. It might work great for others. They have a credit-based system, so you have to buy credits to send out listings and that's the whole process of it. I feel like I was spending more than when I switched to Aereo, which now is what we're using and I'm pretty happy with it. Now, there are some recent conversations about it because it recently got bought out by Zillow. So I don't know what kind of changes I'm looking to find out. But as of now, as far as Aereo, the platform itself, it's great. It's really streamlined. It's very simple. And it's a set monthly payment. Right now, I currently pay 50 bucks a month, I think. So that's really easy to accommodate for. That's the lowest plan because I don't do a ton of listings. We do more luxury listings, so less volume. So that threshold might not work for you. Might have to be another plan. But still, even if it's $100 a month, that's like one shoot will easily cover that. So it's a no-brainer for me. But yeah, we use Aereo. It's great. It integrates in our website so clients can order it. They have their own login, a little portal where they can see their listings, place new orders. Ordering process is really streamlined and modern. The fact that you get property websites and some marketing materials automatically free of charge delivered to your clients is another big selling point. The paywall, so where they have to pay before they download content is huge. One of the biggest reasons I wanted one of these systems because the old way I would do it is I would do the work and then send them an invoice, they'd forget about it. Sometimes it would be past two weeks, three weeks, and I'm like, can you pay this invoice? And it's just really irritating. So having some sort of system that has a paywall, big deal. We've been using that so far. There's others, of course, but right now, like I said, it's working. So I'm not looking to fix something that isn't broke. Next question is also on the day in the life of a real estate photographer. Do you usually ask the sellers to be gone when you shoot? I hope no one will be home when I shoot. <laughs> it's just much easier and enjoyable. I tend to feel rushed when people are there. Yes, 100%. Whether it's existing clients or new clients, I always let them know. One, if they're not a part of the video, if they can just set it up for me and let me in and possibly leave, like the realtor and the sellers. Back to the last question with system that we use, which is currently Aereo. The great thing about that is once a client places an order, it sends them a prep list that I've created of just things for them to give to their sellers or for them to do on their own, like declutter this and put these away, put trash cans away, move cars out of the driveway, etc. And I'm pretty sure in that, I also say it's best for sellers to leave the property during the duration of the shoot because it's just gonna slow me down. I constantly have to move them around. And that's honestly so annoying, especially when I show up to a listing and it's like the whole family's there and they're like, oh, we'll just stay out of your way. And I'm always just going like, hey, I can see you. It's really annoying and frustrating, especially if I have to do photo and video. So I'm doing multiple sweeps of the home and it's just always best if the sellers are out. If the agent's there, that's different. You know, they kind of understand and it's just one person, but there's the sellers or multiple people there. It gets really annoying. In my opinion, it's not rude at all whether you just let them know in advance before the shoot, like, hey, by the way, it's just way easier if no one is there during the property. If you, the agent, are there, that's fine. But the less people, the better for just a smoother and faster workflow. But yeah, that is like a pet peeve of mine. It's just like, come on, just be out of the way for a bit so we can just do our work. And then on the next one, which is my how to film real estate video guided tours, how do agents use the video? Our MLS doesn't allow branded material to be linked with the listing. We just do a vertical reel and my clients only use it on their socials. So this is another good question because I constantly get asked about this and it took me a while to figure out too. So we deliver three formats typically. Photo video package or video package alone, you get three formats. You get the highlight listing video, which is a one to two minute horizontal highlight listing video that either features every room of the home or just the main spaces. Recently, I've been pushing agents to just highlight the main spaces because we can focus more on that. The video is shorter and it's not really long, like a big luxury 5,000 square foot property. It's like a three to four minute walkthrough video. And that's just really long unless the agent's talking in it or something. So we deliver that highlight listing video with their branding. So branded version, whether they want their logo, broker's logo, anything like that, then we deliver that same version without any branding. So an unbranded one. And on that version, it just maybe has the address and that's it. So it's compliant with MLS. And then the third version is a vertical reel. So we take that same horizontal shot footage and we reformat it for vertical. And I know I've made a video on vertical real estate shooting and I answered that question earlier where the best format is to actually shoot it vertically. But funny enough, I've been loving the reformatted perspective a lot more. So taking the horizontal shot video and reformatting it to vertical where my editor basically will do full screenshots or also stack shots. And I don't know, it just looks a lot more natural because whenever you film vertically, it's just really wide long ways and you can't get much of the space on the side. So I love doing like, for example, we'll stack two shots on top of each other and you can see more of the property that way in my opinion. I don't know, I've been experimenting with it. Obviously you have to shoot in really high quality, 4K or up so the footage doesn't fall apart when you punch into it. But yeah, I've been liking those results a lot better. We send three formats, branded, unbranded, and a vertical reel. And then this next question is on my Mac Mini M2 Pro video. Um, we're invested in the Mac Mini M2 Pro like earlier this year in like February, I think. And they asked, does it do good with H.265 10-bit with grading? Yes, that's the main 
reason I got it because at the time I was already shooting with the R6 and I have the R6 Mark II. Point being both of those shoot in H.265 and my 2019 spec'd out $4,000 plus MacBook Pro could not run that footage whatsoever. Fans were blasting, battery would drain immediately, lagging. It was a nightmare. So I landed a project that paid for the investment of the Mac Mini M2 Pro and left some revenue, which was great. The Mac Mini M2 Pro has been great. I wanted to basically highlight the fact that I got the base Mac Mini M2 Pro, so no specific upgrades or anything. And it's been working great. It is streamlined. I keep my work on SSD drives. I don't keep it on the Mac Mini itself. That way it just leaves storage for the apps, but it's been great. Any type of video project or photo project I've done handles it perfectly, whether it's cinema camera footage, footage out of the R6, which I always shoot in 4K 60, which is the H.265 10-bit stuff, and anything else I throw at it. So no complaints, best investment ever. It's working really good. And lastly, this is on one of my shorts where I was doing a behind the scenes real estate video editing shoot and they said, is that a polarizer or ND filter you're shooting with? Thanks. So even though I talk about this so much, I still get this question a lot. And people always think for some reason you might need a variable ND inside or what's the difference between that and a circular polarizer? And to answer that question, my circular polarizer filter is on my camera entirely. As you can see, even right now, if I rotate this, you can see some of the effects it's doing, but it's so versatile, even for a regular filming like this, as you can see, but I leave my CPL on my camera for all real estate stuff, whether it's photo, video, inside, outside, and it just does a great job. It adds a bit of contrast, it deepens blacks, it controls screens and reflections, and especially uh, reflections and glares on floors, especially those shiny wood floors. If you use it outside, it cuts reflections from pools, from foliage, so grass and other bushes, trees won't look super blown out bright, and it deepens blue skies. So there's so many perks out of it. I used to use my variable ND filter outside and put the CPL on for inside, but here's my take. I honestly just crank the shutter for the outside because nothing is moving. So unless I'm filming an agent doing an intro for the video, I'm gonna put on my variable ND for that reason because I'm shooting in 4K 24, want my shutter to be correct, but, but for the regular real estate video shots, nothing's moving in the frame, especially inside. So I found that there's way more benefits of using a CPL than a variable ND, especially because if you use a variable ND at super wide angles, like 15 or 16 mil, you're gonna get really dark like vignetting on the sides and it's not gonna really look pleasing at all. So it's not really worth it in my opinion. I use a CPL exclusively, like I said, unless I'm filming somebody and it just gives you a lot more benefits and makes the image a lot better in my opinion. So that's pretty much it. Those are some of the main questions and topics I've seen coming up in my channel and I love doing these types of videos where it's just a lot more chill, laid back, giving you all some information. I should make an actual like community post to where you can actually ask specific questions for me to answer. That's probably what I'll do next. I love this format. Let me know if you guys enjoyed it, found value out of it, and do these maybe like once a month or something. So leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down your thoughts, subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be part of the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya!